<laughs> you want to know how to get there. But once you know this, give the introduction like this. Yeah, know the concept. I think, I, I think this one. And is this concept a little bit different? Or like from the practices? Is, is it really effective? It's very profound. And any any other concept more than this? Did you study before about the mind and the thoughts? Did you did, 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 did. Well, what I smart, we just chant like Buddha, 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 bit in, bit out, Buddha, or all the stomach. Yeah. But I think in terms of Tibet Samadhi, uh, we samatha we have to lie up. so many lie up him. Taming your mind, right? They, they have lots of steps. Uh, there are nine stages. Mm -hmm. there, there, are nine. there are nine stages of settling the mind. Mm -hmm. And the name, it is called Jokpa, Jindu Jokpa, Lente Jokpa, Nyor Jokpa, Dulwar Jinpa, Shivar Jinpa, Nampar Shivar Jinpa, Tirchipta Jinpa, Nampar Shapa. There are nine stages. Nine stages. Nine okay. stages. And the tenth stage is the Shamata. So once you achieve this tenth stage, then you have to practice in that. Okay, please. Uh, we can uh, uh, just, just you know, just to uh, actually. I think I have talked too much actually regarding Vajra, and I shouldn't be talking this thing. But you know, you are thinking that uh, uh, we are we are not we are not able to meet again and again. And our TT and you know the our class uh, and uh, everybody is doing so much. And I hope that uh, the, our uh, our samaya, the samaya is like okay doing something. You know. Is, Great guru like that, not like that. But samaya is simply uh, keeping you know, as a normal samaya. That's very important because this is the highest introduction. And of course, there are again once you achieve that, there are again some few steps. But uh, these are very very important things. And uh, we never know our life is never uh, permanent. We never know we meet or not meet this and that. So therefore, uh, I am trying to just because we uh, have been doing receiving teachings, especially our senior, the practitioner, they practicing. So I want you to at least introduce this. So I feel that it's important. And what is the use? Just teaching and just talking on the, you know, what we say, the pushing around, and there is no use. Our, our expectation, our ambition, our, our objective is to share and benefit each other. That is my sole objective. Whoever comes to contact, no matter what, there are thousands of people or millions of people or one people, doesn't matter. The only thing is, as much as possible, benefit. Whoever I come to contact, whoever I meet, so may I at least you know, inject something so that he or she knows the mind. So that is the only objective. objective. So this is the ultimate stage that we should practice to this. Uh, uh, this is actually not ultimate stage, but uh, enter into ultimate stage and the some characteristic of ultimate stage, which the previous yogis and the teacher they don't simply just tell this, and the student they themselves has to realize this. But I feel that you know, I think it is good to tell sometimes, so that getting opportunity. And our Titi and our sister here is young, so one day definitely, I really hope that they should also become a very great practitioner, apart from you know, just being a uh, missing. And I want them to uh, be a young couple, beautiful couple, to benefit immensely. First, to benefit others, and to practice ourselves. Tell us ourselves, definitely. And when we reach into the altar, when we are home, like that, then when we reach outside, not like the world, wherever. Whether it's a toilet in the toilet, whether in the kitchen, whether in the altar, whether also in home, the time. Practice. So, you practice like that after five years, after one, two years, then getting more and more blessing, then you realize, and then later, then you get to something. Something you can benefit. So, once you know the nature of mind and this thing, then the thoughts of benefiting comes naturally. Without any politics, politics has no place in. Because politics are only dissolved with doing our, you know, outer forms, hearing good things, smelling, they are only finished. They have no place 
for a yogic mind, in the true yogic mind, in the real practitioner's mind, those nonsense doesn't exist actually. It is dissolved in the outer level. If we do not dissolve these things, and if we do not understand the nature of mind, then this kind of things, unnecessary politics, unnecessary, you know, name and fame, unnecessary thing comes here. But as a real practitioner, an in-depth practitioner, who have to you know, dissolve out into in, in into secret, and doesn't have place here. It is not that we don't welcome them, it is not existence of them. There's no place for them. So that's very important. So I really want you to practice that. To Dolma also, I am sometimes advised like this. So everybody should practice like that. Now how to, as our sister said, how to realize this? Actually, this is not an elegant state, honestly. But this is a very, you know, almost trying to enter into the nature of mind. There are so many things again to you know, explain or like to realize ourselves. There are certain things. Now, because when I talk about shamatha, I think it is, I don't have to simply just keep this breathing, 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 and that's it. Then doesn't know where to reach after breathing. So I think I have to little bit introduce. Now, the main purpose of to breathe is to now to reach in the department of like mind empty just now. Not about thoughts just now, but empty species. Empty species simply mean the shamatha stage. Now, if we do not practice shamatha, we cannot reach here again. Then here it will become an intellectual talk. Just knowing to the intellect oh, like this, but not reaching in real way. We can't reach in the real speciousness just now. Now to reach that, now we have to practice shamatha. Now we have to keep the, the posture properly. But no problem, any posture, but I think we have to keep the spine straight. The physical seven posture, vajrayana posture. And yeah, uh, like sometimes you know you can keep like this, relaxing, this one, like this, yeah, like this also, okay. Or like this, like our bars, you know, like this also, okay, like this also, okay. But straight down, you know, spine. A little bit down. Nirmanakaya is done. Because we are Nirmanakaya form just now. So down. Sambhakakaya meditation. Direct. And Dharmakaya, like this. When master dies, some master they simply do and dies. So that means he has enlightened in Nirmanakaya. It indicates. So some master dies like this. You know, just sitting and they die. That means he has gone to Nirmanakaya Buddha. Some master they die like this. Just keeping the eyes up. That means he has enlightened in Dharmakaya form. So there are so many. And when master dies, there are some relic scab, some red broken, something, something happened. And every time God, everything God the reason. Through that we know where he is enlightened. In what kind of enlightenment? And when in the shamatha and uh, the shamatha and vipassana has to be united and be in the nature of mind, if we can be in the nature of mind for one minute, just now, when we die, we can be in five minutes. In that. If you can stay a samadhi for one day during during just now, I mean like during our this one, then during that time you can stay five days, five times more. So likewise, there are many things to be discussed and many things to be known. So I think these are important information as a meditator. Not we are looking, we are not outside practitioners. Nangpa, uh, Nangpa means I like insider. The Buddhism is Nangpa, normally Tibetans say Nangpa. What is Nangpa? Means always looking at your mind, not getting lost with the manifestation. Now, what is manifestation? Six types form, sound, smell, taste, and feelings, 
and thoughts. The sixth, we are not lost. These things we will not grab. So, this thing comes from the mind, so they be in the mind. All the time, be in the mind. What happened outside manifestation? No death. It doesn't bother about that. So, all the time practicing that. So, it is called Namba, death is inside us. So, Buddhism normally studies this. So, therefore, we don't bother whether one can keep a you know, handprint. That is a form of it. Magic, showing magic outside. So, true practitioner doesn't bother this. A fly flying outside. You don't bother about this. A good form, right? Flying. Don't bother. Because we bother about the inside. We are inside practitioner. We should realize inside. Once it is realized inside, so the physical manifestation, whether flying or not flying, everything dissolves. And get the enlightenment. That is our purpose. Our practice is not to just fly and just, you know, just go somewhere and uh, keep the rock and keep the, you know, our footprint. So not this. When our inside practice becomes so powerful, so it naturally happens this for benefiting others, to show the power. That's it. So we should not be looking for these nitty gritty small things. Now what we should bother is as a meditator, we should bother always to realize this mind. Now we knew that those form, smell, taste, this and that, name, good, bad, anything. Even if it's bad name, good name, doesn't matter. Even good form, bad form, doesn't matter. Good taste, that doesn't matter, doesn't last. And this, uh, even good thought, bad thought, doesn't. Yesterday thought gone. Just uh, one minute ago our thought came, where's that is gone, it doesn't stay. So these are, these we cannot, you know, all the time get them. The permanent is the mind. Permanent is our mind. So that permanent we should understand, that we should get. This is going to, this mind of ours is going to, this has stayed with us for a long time. There's no time. It is with us. This is original us. This body is not us. Before, we might be a cow or pig or human being, anything this body. Now a good form of human being. We eat lots of chicken, so next time we'll come. Come back as a chicken. So next time we can come back as an animal. We can come back as a pig. So body changes. Limitless. Billions and billions of body changes. This body is not us. Forms we see changes. Sound we hear changes. Everything we change. Previous life, so many sounds. Where are they? Nothing. Our body, previous life body is gone. This body is going to be, you know, vanish. When we die, it is going. But what it doesn't vanish, permanently stays with us, very faithful, millions and millions of time, us together. So it is a mind. Even thought doesn't have, you know, even thought doesn't stay with us. Thought comes, goes off. Thought comes, goes off. Thought also not good friend. Thought also not us. It's just manifestation of our mind. The real us, the real we, is our mind, the nature of mind. So that is very important. So that we have to study, that we have to understand, that we have to realize. So this realizing the process is known as the meditation. Now therefore, now how to realize, as our sister pointed out, how to realize this precious nature of mind? The first step is to calm our mind. Without calming, no. First calm the mind and become like this precious. Then through the coming mind, then thought comes. Then we can see directly. Just now, it's very difficult to see. We don't know from where thought comes. Either hate or from here or we are confused just now. We don't know. My thought comes from brain. My thought comes from heart. From where it comes, we are confused just now. So one day when we become us, especially, then we will know from where thought comes. But to become it's precious to become vast. Now, what we have to do? We have to do shamatha practice. Okay, now let's do a little bit. No? Just sit like this. The bodily posture. 
Then our our is a, a warble, just keep in shot. And one thing, as a as a doctor jumbo practitioner, a, a nature of mind, if you really want to realize the nature of mind, I think uh, there are many, many ways. A uh, Buddha has stressed the first turning of will, he stressed closing of eyes. But later part, he stressed opening the eye. Because this is most of the time we spend opening our eyes, you know, opening. We can avoid. So how long we are going to close? Dzogchen means you know, understanding everything. That's very important. Because most of the time we spend our life in data, day-to-day -day experience. Meditation means adjusting trying to understand the day-to-day -day activity, what is happening. So we know that I think we could open our eyes. But sometimes, if we be a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, when our meditation is not that good, when we are not able to do little properly, okay, it's okay to you know, close and just focus on the breathing. But just if we close our eyes, it will reach into the darkness. I'm not telling you reach into the darkness because I see. You close the eyes. You close your eyes. You want to walk in the darkness or you want to walk in the brightness? Now your choice. Which one do you want to walk? You close the eyes. Can you close the eyes of everybody just now? Now you are in the dark. You choose darkness or light. Actually, you are actually wanted to get the nature of mind, understand the nature of mind. That is light. So, I think it is always good to practice in the light. You prefer to walk outside, closing eyes or opening eyes? Opening eyes. So, it's a possibility. So, therefore, you know, if you close like this, we don't see the clear, empty nature of our even breath. We cannot see. You close it, we can't see. But, breathe out, now breath has gone out and it vanished into the air. Okay. Look at the breath. Breath and our mind, the space, become one. And we reach into the emptiness. Yes, sir. So therefore, I think it is a very short and very good method. But sometimes, again, when I say like that, is it necessary to really open our eyes and really do? No. In the beginning, we can close our eyes. And practice. Why closing eyes? Because Disturbance. When I when I open my eyes, now we see so many things in front. You know, we see many many things. When I see book, my mind goes there. When I see juice, my mind goes there. So therefore, to just what to say now, to close our mind. So we just close the drawer. When I consciousness drawer is closed, our thoughts to forms are limited. So the single point in it, little bit. So therefore, we can close. Even if you close, okay, in the beginning. Even if you do not close your eyes, this one, okay. Now, breathe. Breathe. First, breathe out. Now, we cannot breathe out. I think possibly should breathe in. If you do not breathe in, then we cannot breathe out. Okay. First, we can breathe in. Yeah, we are breathing. We should not think that I am breathing in. This is thought. We are practicing to dissolve our thought. We are not practicing to, you know, imp uh, I mean, increase our thought. So therefore, just be aware. Just know that I am breathing. That's it. Breathe in. So you, you are knowing that I am breathing in. You should not think that, okay, I am breathing in. Now I am breathing out. You should not think that. You must simply be aware that. Yeah, okay, we breathe in. Then breathe out. When we breathe out, we simply know that we are breathing out. And then again breathe in. And breathe out. So we are simply watching just now. The object of meditation is, the object is breathing. And we are not body, we are neither sound, but we are awareness. 
as Madam had pointed out, this is simply awareness, consciousness. Now, this consciousness is watching. Now, who is subject? Now, subject is our consciousness, our mind. An object to be meditated on is a brick. Now, only two things is there. Your mind, consciousness, and the brick. No thoughts also. Now, in between this consciousness, mind, and breathe, there will be one disturbances. There will be one monkey who is going to disturb this two. They are really trying to become one. They are really trying to be one and trying to be friend. But in between, then there will be one monkey. Who is that monkey? <laughs> this is thought. Now thought will come. When I be with the brain, then there will be thoughts. Okay, I'm going to do that. Yesterday I did that. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. This and that. Now, when thought, now when thought comes, you don't bother about thought. Just now, as a beginning, you know, you don't bother about this thought. You simply 